suicide. The bite is the blood of a thousand men and women were filled in these laws. Limbs twisted and broken, eyes gouged from bloody bottles, fresh burned black. Hey guys. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to World of the Unexplained. I'm Trent Lackey. This is Jay Scott, your only JD DJ on the Omni Sound Radio One Network. Tonight we've got some special guests for you uh, Lisa and Tom Butler from the American Association of Electronic Voice Phenomenon. EVP. Now, you guys have seen the movie White Noise, I'm sure. And, um, well, these, these guys were actually there consulting, from what I understand. We'll talk more about that later. But, uh, these guys are held out as the foremost experts in the field of EVP, and uh, they've got a book out, and we'll be talking about that uh, during the show as well. But um, right now, I'll bring them on. Hey, thanks for having us on. Hello. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, guys. Welcome to the show. We're having a beautiful day here. Oh, really? That's great. Yeah. Uh, w- Fantastic. Well, uh, the weather's really nice uh, here in Carolina, too. Yeah. Well, that's that's good. We just got through with winter, so. Oh, yeah. oh man. Where, where are you guys located at again? We're in Nevada. And oh, okay. Uh, it's been a uh, a long uh, winter in Nevada. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so how, when did you all find out about uh, EVP? Um, um, actually, the first time I found out about EVP, it really scared the ever-living bejesus out of me. I was probably about um, eight or nine years old. Wow. And my grandmother... Used to, um, she had a hearing problem, you know, you know how old folks are. <laughs> but uh, it's, she was, uh, she used to sleep with a radio turned up really, really, really loud at night. So you could hear it throughout the whole house. And I would spend my summers with her and my grandpa. And uh, she would always listen to talk radio really, really, you know, all through the night. And as a kid growing up, I was just used to having that in the background really loud. And I remember one night, I guess I was about eight or nine years old, they had someone on, I have no idea who it was, and I have no idea who even the radio show host was, but they had a guy on there talking about communicating with dead people, or being able to hear what the dead people are saying through televisions, through radios, through things like that. And honestly, yeah, really, you know, an eight or nine year old kid, you know, your imagination's running wild already. (laughs) Add that to the fire, and, uh, you know, you're you're asking for it. (laughs) That sounds like a... A really exciting time for an eight-year-old to <laughs> discover that somebody might be watching you. Oh, yeah. I know we had a, a member that uh, we've got a spirit team that's been developing on the other side called the Big Circle. The Big Circle is really over there and here. But one of the members, you know, we kind of all get together every other Thursday, no matter where we are in the world, and try to record about the same time. Oh, wow. And this gal said... Um, well, um, how many people are here with me? And the EVP said 22. <laughs> Whoa. Uh. You know, that's kind of, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know if you should ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, go ahead, Trent. Oh, okay. I was just uh, basically going to have some uh, background material. Uh, how'd, you guys, uh, how'd you guys get into this? And uh, what made you decide to to follow this sort of um, investigation? Well, okay, let's see. We've been doing recording voices for about 16 years. Wow. And we actually, you know, the world was quite different 16 years ago. We were corporate workers, upper-level management in Kansas. And Kansas was not particularly a very open place 16 years ago. No. No. (laughs) Kansas? They, they had actually arrested a, a lady for fortune-telling the year that we moved there. Oh, my no gosh. No kidding. Yeah, no. Wow. No, they had, you know, to make a point. So I, you know, basically, um, we worked, you know, I mean, from 5 in the morning till 7 at night. You know how it is. 
but I read this book by Sarah Estep, who's the original founder of the American Association of Electronic Voice Phenomena, which has been around since 1982. Um, and she wrote this book, which also, by the way, is a free download on our webpage, uh, aaevp.com. Uh -huh. If you go to the book page, you can actually download that book, and you can't get it for less than about 60 bucks now. You wow. Know, a, mm. So um, you don't need to pay 60 bucks. But anyway, <laughs> I, I read this book, and, you know, this little little lady is saying that she's recording voices. And for whatever reason, I mean, we're both very logical people, but somehow it's it struck a chord with me that, that it might be possible. And the thing about EVP, you don't have to, you know, I didn't have to believe her. It's like I could try it, and that's what we did. And we actually got a voice on our third, we, you know, we set it up every evening and recorded. And on the third evening, we got a whispery, you know, not as good as we get now, but we got a uh, voice. And what was interesting, that day, I had, I don't know, I had this feeling that to get some crystals, and I mean, crystals don't mean anything to us. They're just pretty. And yeah. where we were in Kansas, there was a, a, you know, Arkansas is full of crystal mines, and we'd go, you know, we'd just go dig crystals. It's like Easter egg hunt. It was fun. <laughs> but I got this feeling, okay, put these crystals around the recording equipment. And that night when we played the recording back, here was this voice that said, crystals help. And, I mean, I didn't sleep for three days. Tom, Tom, <laughs> Tom couldn't hear it. Yeah, Tom wasn't sure what he believed. I'm an electronic engineer, and it took a long time. Yeah, I reckon and, so. Yeah, it was about, uh, I don't know, four months until I got one, you know, loud enough for him to hear. But I didn't think about crystals, you know, the first, um, you know, crystal radios. First radio. Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. definitely. That's true. So, what, what what did you have? You guys communicated with any of your deceased loved ones through using EVP? Yeah, um, actually, the first, unbelievably, the first person I I was interested because I lost my dad and he was an engineer and I thought, you know, I mean, this is kind of you know, yeah, <laughs> this would be something that you know he might try to use to reach me. Instead, I had vivid dreams about him, and the person that came through was his mother, my grandmother. Oh, wow. Who was a very, I'm not going to mention the church, but believe me, this church that she was in, when she was in the physical, I mean, she used to tell my mother that my mother was uh, going to sending her whole family to hell wow. because we didn't belong to her church. So very, I mean, the last person in the world that... Um, you know, you'd think we'd hear from. And we've heard from my mother, um, Tom's father, um, several good friends, uh, an uncle. Um, we usually, to be honest with you, we don't keep running dialogues uh -huh. okay. with any of these people. Some people do. We kind of let them check in and, um, you know, maybe do a, a few messages with them. And then we just kind of let them go on with whatever they want to do. And we haven't had one... My grandmother communicated for quite a long time before it, that kind of stopped. But um, it's kind of a pattern for a, a lot of uh, people who work with EVP a lot to eventually get a, a team of people working with them on the other side. We kind of expect that to happen, and we, we think we have a team working with us. But our team, well, they answer us whenever we need EVP. They are always there, but. They're more the kind that makes us go out and publish a new newsletter or something like that. <laughs> it's like past researchers, and um, more. that's more of the group that we have helping us rather than um, our relatives. Now, are you guys religious at all? Are we what? Are you religious at all? Do you, do you belong to any certain denomination or faith? Well, we are, but we... Um, yeah, more than you would uh, realize. <laughs> okay. But uh, one of the big things we like to point out about EVP is it's not religion. One of the things that was kind of shocking to us during uh, the time we were working with Universal on marketing white noise, we, you know, of course, were with Michael Keaton, who is a fabulous actor, hysterically funny. He's you know, Batman. You know, <laughs> Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton I thought EVP was a religion. Oh, oh well. But that's a valid question. It, it, one of the things, you know, obviously we're, we're sharing a, a vocabulary with religions, uh, you know, the, the other side, spirit, and on and on, but 
Well, we think that one of them is that we can we feel like we can scientifically prove a lot of things. Uh, first, the fact that personality survives physical death, and then second, therefore there's a place that personality survives in, and we can communicate with them. Well, a lot of the things we're finding out, we feel tend to support the fundamentals of most of the religions. Hmm. Wow. So, and it's like, um, gosh, I mean, if we took a poll, of, of, we have a lot of different members that hear from their relatives, and we actually, you know, maybe you've given us an idea, we should take a poll on all the different <laughs> religions that, they, <laughs> that they're in. It doesn't seem, seems like it doesn't matter what religion you're in, you can still speak through EVP. Huh. We do have a few members that... Uh, probably are not using their real name because they are in religions that are more t intolerant of these things. Well, that, that, that was one of the questions I had, and I, I know you want to jump in here real quick, Trent. But, oh, that's okay. Um, let me, let me just throw this out because one of the things is like, well, how do you know? You know, how do you know that you're not, you know, you're not talking to some demonic uh, deity or some form of, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? How do you know that that's the actual person that you're, you're really communicating with? I guess, how do you know um, that John Edward isn't communicating with the demonic personality and telling you, yeah. you know, you have to um, have enough communication to that they give you evidential information. Um, to be honest with you, we don't believe in demons. We believe you create your reality, and if you believe in demons, then you might stir one up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, you know, you need to, you know, in this, you it's like picking up a telephone. Uh -huh. You cannot see who's on the other side. So people that um, write to us and say, hey, I, you know, I've got John Lennon's voice, or I've got this, or I've got, you know, just like I was Cleopatra in a past life, <laughs> <laughs> you know it is. You need to have more proof. You need to get them to give you information that other people wouldn't know. But one of the things I think that is really important is that the, uh, the idea that there's got to be a punchline for, for a demonic messages. In other words, sooner or later you got to get a negative, or they got to get you, I got you, or <laughs> but sell yeah. your soul or something. And people, like, like for instance, the founder of our association, Sarah Eastep, she recorded voices and communicated almost a direct dialogue with her husband on the other side for years, and there was never a punchline like, I got you. Hmm. Yeah, huh. so... I mean, you know, it's possible. You know, another thing about knowing who you're talking to, which is really fascinating about this phenomena, and it, we, you know, how this is possible, we don't know, but it, it is, and that's they sound the same. So, Weird. okay, for instance, my mother, okay, my mother was another person, very different than, we didn't, she didn't even know we did this. Uh -huh. uh, because she would have said, you're going to hell. <laughs> you know, you're talking to, you can't, you're not supposed to do this. So I, after she crossed, I never, ever called on her, tried to reach her, um, anything like that as far as EDP. And we were doing a um, seminar up in Canada for an international spiritualist association, and we had done a recording trying to get some EDP that this group of people might be interested in. And as we closed, I said, uh, is there anything else that you all would like to say? And I'm the one that listened back to the recording, and here was this voice, and it said, I miss you, Lisa. And it was my mother. Hmm. You know, I mean, it was my mother's voice. And I didn't say anything to Tom. Now, she had been gone two years. And so, you know, I mean, it's not like it was on our mind. And I played this recording for Tom, and he said, my God, that's your mother. Oh. So yeah. we can recognize their voices. Oh. <clears throat> um. Let's, uh, let's talk about this communication a little bit. Um, if I remember correctly, look, uh, looking on your website, um, and just correct me if I'm wrong, um, it said on the website that, that basically a lot of the EVP communications are not very long. You know, they're you know roughly just a, a handful of seconds at any given moment. Now, um, First of all, is that true? And second of all, when you communicate, how do you communicate to them? Do you just say it out loud, or do you uh, put it back into the machine itself? There, there's been some research on that. Alexander McRae, uh, who will be speaking at our conference this June, uh, has, has done some actual bean counting where he says, okay, 
uh, and he's used oscilloscopes and really studied this. And basically, the voices, the messages are energy limited. A short message tends to be stronger in volume. A long message tends to be lower in volume or trail off on the end. For instance, the I Miss You Lisa uh, EVP, it tends to trail off a little bit on the end as if uh, her mother was running out of energy. And uh, some of them, if it's a very long message, uh, you can clearly see that it's in, in short packets. Like, uh, for instance, one of them that we have, uh, uh, one of our members recorded this, I'm going to pass a law to pay you. And it's, I'm going to pass a law to pay you. Like that. It's, it's drawn out into packets. Uh-huh. And when we, we talk to them, we speak as if they're standing in the room in front of us. Uh, we verbalize. Uh, he, the same Alexander McRae again did this research that basically he said that uh, uh, you get about 50% more EVP per minute re- if, if you verbalize your questions than if you think them. Likewise, we find that if you engage them in c- communication, we, you know, this is a form of communications and they are people, if you engage them in communication, then you're more apt to get responses and also meaningful comments as opposed to if you just open the mic and let them talk. But a lot of people do get results um, who, you know, just simply turn on a recorder and go somewhere else. But again, what research has shown is you get more EVP if you interact. Let's let's play that one uh, that Tom was just talking about the um, the Lisa one the um, Betty's in there with Lisa. It's um, we're gonna we're gonna cue that up. Okay. Hang on just a second here. All right. We're going to move into a bedroom on the second floor now. Okay. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. We're going to move into Sorry. Oh. <laughs> that, Sorry, guys. that one is just Betty's in there. Um, the one we were talking about is a different EVP. The the EVP Betty's in there. That's actually on the uh, White Noise DVD. Have you all seen the bonus features on that DVD? I have not. I saw it in the theater, and I hadn't had a chance to get it on DVD yet. Yeah. Uh, I well, I don't know. It's not that good a movie. <laughs> I don't know if you were <laughs> to buy the DVD or not. But one thing that Universal did that um, really um, you know, made a difference really to EVP. On the actual DVD, there's a how to record for EVP that we did. There's They took us out to two haunted locations. And actually, you know, with cameras, etc., we were able to get a few EVP, which is t- uh, the pressure. It was amazing. But Betty's in there was actually is one of the EVP that's on that DVD. Huh. Okay. Now I'm gonna. If you guys will just hang tight a second, I'm gonna play this this again for for the people out there. I'm gonna play a little bit clearer recording of this. Uh, hang on just a second. I've got to find it now. All right. Yeah. It, 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 I'm gonna play one direct that's not running through our board, so they get a bit of, a bit of a clearer a clearer feed on that. If you guys will just hang tight with us for just a second. We're going to move into a bedroom on the second floor now. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, sorry guys. <laughs> That's all right. I just yeah, wanted to get, get a clearer. I, I think they can hear it more clearly when it's going okay. going out that pathway. Uh, we can't monitor We're not it here. Able to hear that, so let me make sure I'm on the same page with you. That's one you can hear. Uh, Lisa say something effective. Going to go down to the bedroom. You can hear the footsteps on a hardwood floor. Oh, no, that was the one where you just played the uh, Betty's in there. Yeah. Okay. Just the Betty. Okay. Yeah. The Betty's in there. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I think we have it on our website. They. We, we had a whole bunch of emails from uh, people who saw the bonus feature and, and emailed our website that they spotted an orb as we're walking up the stairs right before that recording. Huh. There's an orb that goes dancing across the bottom of the screen, and it's it's a non-luminous, it looks like a little puffball of hmm. black go by. It's real strange. Yeah, and I mean, it's... it's there's no que- there's no question that it's reflected light or anything like that. It's it's actually like I say, a black puffball going by. Hmm. Kind of interesting. I hadn't I seen an orb like that before. 
No. Not a, not a black one, no. No. Yeah, that's not good <laughs> I'm always suspicious of, well, there's a bug caught in the light. Yeah, right. Lens, yeah, anything. Right, orbs are <clears throat> sort of yeah. debatable. Yeah. Um, are you yeah. going to play that, Scott? I just did. Let me let me let me throw these numbers Sorry. up here. It's eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine. That's eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine. Call us live and speak with Tom and Lisa Butler or locally three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six. Don't forget about the chat room too. Uh, you can get onto that on our website and uh, um, it's it's kind of filling up. <laughs> you know, if you want a question, you can ask it there too. Yeah, in case you guys are shy about being on on the uh, on the radio. Right. Um, um, no, nah, you go ahead, Scott. Okay. Um, now, you said that you, you've communicated with all these people. Do people come to you and request you to contact specific um, relatives of theirs that have passed away? They have, but we, unfortunately, we have little time even for our own research. Uh -huh. um, the association has 500 people in it, and just the um, paperwork, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of interesting. It's become a almost a business i mean it it takes a lot of time yeah, it, it's more than we we're working harder now than we did you know the old saying but both of us worked in the corporate world we worked a lot more than 40 hours a week and we're working a lot more than that now <laughs> so we can't we can't possibly and then you know how do you you get into the problem well evp takes a lot of time and yeah. so you know you'd, you'd want to charge and then gosh you couldn't charge because somebody's so we we don't we simply tell people, and it is, it's much easier for someone to reach a loved one on their own. It's tons more proof. When you get an EVP yourself, it, it's life-changing. You know, if I play one for you, you, it's like, wow, or whatever. But when you record it, it really changes your life. And so we'll tell people, look, you don't even have to join the association. There are instructions on the website. You know, try this for yourself. And yeah. Any, anything that a record voice, uh, and we re we really do recommend in inexpensive devices. Uh, we we have some people who come to us with you know audio you know, music quality equipment. And say, well, you know, I'm I'm using the best there is, and I still can't get a voice. And we say, well, what well, that's the point is that the voices are made out of available sound energy. This has been proven over and over again. So some of the inexpensive digital recorders right now, the voice recorders are so noisy, they're terrible for music, but they're excellent for EVP. And so, you know, for an investment of maybe, you know, what, 40 or 50 bucks for a recorder, or use what you have at home, uh, there's a free uh, audio editing program, uh, an open source called Audacity. And I'm familiar with that. link to it from our website. And then there's uh, instructions on our website on the techniques on how to do this. And read Sarah's book. Um, and... The, the idea is that it's so much easier for you to learn how to record yourself than it is to get somebody to do it for you. Hmm. Yeah. But a lot of people, we're kind of in, I mean, EVP is not for everybody. We're in a society that, you know, uh, thank you, I want instant gratification. <laughs> right. EVP can take time, you know, I mean, it, it takes some dedication. It takes uh, time to listen back to these recordings. And so, um, you know, a lot of people don't want to spend the time and so they will ask you you know will you do it for me mm. uh, and there are a few people out there that seem to be trying to do that um, yeah, I, we, we've set up our website so that in, you know on uh, in our discussion board it's a members only area mainly so that we don't have people in there trying to debunk us all the time <laughs> but um, you know, people post examples that they just recorded and other people help them understand it or maybe knock out the noise on it and and just generally learn to work with EVP. And so we have a lot of members helping members. Um, and we, we've, we've, had a lot of, we've had a lot of members get the voice for the other person. So like this every other Thursday recording session, uh -huh. um, you know, uh, people share with each other who they've lost, et cetera. There's a, we have one member that's got a memorial site, and so there's kind of a list of... Um, people that we're looking for to hear from and a lot of times another member will get that person for the person huh. um, about, on average I mean is there any kind of formula for this but 
on average, how how successful is a standard EVP? Is it is it is it as simple as oh the first time it happens versus it doesn't happen after a hundred recordings? I mean, is there some kind of a general I don't know we, bell curve for EVP re successful recordings? We, it, you know, it, it seems like you know you hear people talk about the veil is getting thinner. Um, it, it seems like it's getting easier. There's, we routinely advise people to set aside oh, a week or so, a couple weeks of, of routine or, you know, in other words, a, a scheduled practice on, on recording for EVP. And don't be discouraged if you don't get one right away. But we get actually quite a few emails from people saying, well, I got one the first try. And one we, we got a, We've got a caller, oh, Tom. Can hang, you hang, on can a second, hang tight a second? Here we go. Hello, caller. Uh, where are you calling from? What's your name? Hey, this is Paul from Greensboro. Hey, Paul. Hey, um, I got a question. Uh, I was wondering if your guest could describe what, I, I guess you call it a session of recording is like, because I thought I had an idea of how this stuff worked, but I think maybe I was wrong. Okay. Hey. That's a valid question. Fine. It's really easy. I'm... Um, uh, there's actually two things. If you want to um, get a hold of a loved one, I would suggest, or we would suggest, finding a kind of a place in your house, uh, maybe just a corner, just a place that you can go every time um, and, and try to record. Uh, you want to say, um, we would suggest uh, doing a little meditation beforehand or saying a prayer of protection. This is to um, show your intent. It's also stating uh, what what you're about to do. Ask that only those that um, are uh, wish you the highest and the best come through, and turn on your recorder. We would say don't actually turn your recorder on and don't speak for maybe 30 seconds. We say that because we learn the hard way. I maybe this is energy or whatever. Oftentimes, they will speak right away, and you will hear your voice saying, Hi, this is Lisa and Tom Butler, and you hear an EVP under there, and it'll drive you crazy. <laughs> so you turn your recorder on, you wait 30 seconds, you announce yourself and what you want to do maybe, and then you ask a question, and then you pause. You know, you wait 30 seconds or a minute. You let them answer, and then you ask another question. And we would say keep your recording short, five minutes. Um, some people go ten, but you want to then play this back, and you want to listen very carefully. Well, one of the things also, um, if you're using a, a, a noisy digital recorder, um, you probably won't have to supply background noise. But otherwise, what we recommend, like, for instance, a cassette or a music-quality recorder, uh, that you provide some kind of background noise, like a, a uh, household fan makes good noise. That's where the term white noise comes from, is that back in the old days, people didn't have signal generators or anything available to them. So what they did was they turned a the radio on off station, and you got that white noise uh, static, and they used that as a recording media. But the problem is, is that one, once you record a voice in white noise and you got to get rid of the noise to find the voice mm -hmm. so we, we, we recommend it uh, uh, like right now a household fan but you need to experiment around um, Lisa, like Lisa says you, you give them time to talk at the end it's good to give them a chance to say what they want to say uh, in the beginning we always try to tell them how we did last time giving them feedback again Remember, you're talking to people and treating them with respect. Um, and also, uh, a lot of people seem to have better luck out in, you know, they don't want to, they haven't lost a loved one, they don't want to record in their house, and they uh, are with ghost groups or investigative groups of different kinds, or they're just interested in history, and they go into purported haunted houses, haunted sites, and record EVP. And I know our last conference we had in a haunted, boy, it was a dump, but it was a very haunted hotel. And many members were able to get their first EVPs in that building. And so sometimes it's a lot easier to just go out to your local 
haunted wherever and record there. Okay. Does that uh, take care of it for you, Paul? Got any others? Yeah, I think so. So you can you ask your questions, give them time to respond, and then you have to listen to the tape later. So you can't carry on like a a live conversation. That's right. It's not a two-way conversation okay. in real time. It's more extended. Right. Um, it takes some patience in that respect. But one of the things that is, is really important is that you, you, you shouldn't be timid about this. You should just you know, don't worry about anything wrong going going on. Just going ahead and recording and giving it a try. And you, you're going to find the way that's best for you. I, I think that uh, in, uh, after a person's been recording for a year or so, everybody's kind of adapted their own way of uh, doing this. Mm-hmm. And like Lisa says, if you just want a voice, go to a haunted location. The, the energy's there. Uh, you don't necessarily get the local ghost. You might get your your best friend coming through, but the energy is there to communicate. We're at home in a controlled situation. We recommend it because it's it's a little harder to get a voice, but when you do, you're more apt to get the one you're after. Right. Okay. Okay, Paul. We appreciate thanks, Paul. you calling in. Uh, we've got to take a short break right now. Okay. Thanks. But um, we'll be right back with uh, Tom and Lisa Butler talking about EVPs on World of the Unexplained. All right. See you in a sec, guys. Sacrifice millions of dead brain cells so you don't have to. This is Omnisound. When it comes to karma, there are three types of people. Those that live with it, those that try to avoid it, and those that listen to Full Moon Radio. (laughs) Sure, listening won't get rid of bad karma, but it will keep you entertained while you're waiting on the bad stuff to happen because of that spitball you hit your teacher with in third grade. Full Moon Radio on the Omnisound Radio 1 Network. You're, you're listening to Omnisound. Omnisound Radio. Presented in Omnisound Streaming Media. Omnisound. Man, this thing f***ing smokes. Omnisound Radio. And we're back. Hey, guys. Hi. You guys still with us? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, um, going right into the question that I, I had thought about it a minute ago before Paul called, um, it's basically, and actually, it's it's a question that's on the chat room too. Um, what physically causes the sounds of the EVP? For example, I mean, when a human voice is heard, I mean, essentially, it's the vocal cords that are vibrating and then passing on through the air. I mean, if I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. So, you know, how does an EVP voice occur when you know there are no material vocal cords to vibrate you, you see what i'm saying yeah see uh the, there's a lab in italy of researchers and probably the only formal lab in the, in the world on this uh el laboratorio and their research is showing that the voices most often do not have the the voice box frequency or fundamental frequency okay and they're formed out of what they describe as a thickening of the background noise. And what I, I describe it as is a, an opportunistic use of the available uh, voice frequencies in the noise. And the, the, the formants, the way that the uh, voice graph shows up on the uh, analysis, uh, sometimes it's clear that the voice, those formants, would, the voice box or the, 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 the mouth and the throat would have to have contorted in ways that is not humanly possible in order to make the voices. Okay. Like that. hmm. That's um. And another yeah. thing, I don't know. Somewhere, you know, the web is wild. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere on the web, one of the researchers out there um, was getting EVP in a range that wasn't uh, the frequency of the human voice. And I know during. Well, uh, over a period of years, we've gotten several uh, messages from people that want to know what that frequency is. They want to know what the real EVP is, because that's the real EVP. EVP is found, well, like Tom would say, wherever we're listening. Um, So, I mean, there are EVPs that are the same as the uh, human voice frequency. Um, There's some that we've seen that are above or below, but... The ones that are above or below are not the real EVP, and the one, you know, it, 
the ones that they're all real EVP. It, okay. Yeah, EVP is a form of communication. I mean, that, that's if you operate from the beginning of that assumption, then they're going to talk to you where they think they can reach you. And you could take, for instance, uh, a very high ultrasound, ultrasonic frequency. In order to be able to hear a voice in that, you would have to reduce it in frequency down to what you could hear. And in doing that, you're, you're probably going to find a voice in there, an EVP, but it's not because it was in the ultrasonics, it's just because that's where you're listening now. Yeah. Why, why, don't, why, don't these, um, why don't these spirits communicate with you in other ways? I mean, is, is this the easiest way? Oh, they know. We, I like to say that EVP is one form of after-death communication. I think the, like one of the major books about this is Hello from Heaven by the Guggenheims, who are um, people, uh, researchers at the University of Arizona in Tucson. And I forget what they were studying, but they asked for people, you know, just they, I don't know how they got the question out there or whatever, but they started collecting reports from people who said they had heard from their father who had crossed, their mother, their loved one who had crossed. And there were 12 different um, things that seemed to be repeated. And, you know, people have problems with their lights or uh, electrical things or affected people have very vivid dreams um the the kind of the big difference with evp as opposed to other types of after death communication is you know you're initiating it uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so you're opening yourself up to being to being contacted basically well you're asking for the contact yes yeah. originally the guggenheims classified after death communication is only spontaneous. It was fascinating to us. They listed phone calls from the dead, and that's another thing we can talk about, because, boy, that's pretty exciting. Oh, God. <laughs> that scene in Poltergeist? Oh, man, you know where the little girl sitting there and her grandma calls? Oh, yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> but that, I mean, that is more common than people, you know, realize. Nowadays, we're also, we're getting EVPs on answering machines, cell phones. Hmm. You know, they'll use just about anything they, you know, can use. Uh, the the caller that called in was asking about, you know, you know, having to play it back so you can hear it. Yeah. There is one researcher right now in Italy that gets what we call direct voice phenomena, right? Direct voice radio. Okay. D- DVR. Uh, uh, d- d- direct radio voice. <laughs> oh, they they coined their own acronym. We're still catching up. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, his name is Marcelo Bacci, and he's not going to be with us very much longer. He He's probably 80 now. Oh, wow. But hmm. he's one of the kind of original um, researchers in the world, and he actually has this old tube radio. He asks mothers who have lost their children to come into his lab on Friday evenings. He kind of fiddles with the, you know, the dial on his radio, and you hear this whoosh, whooshing noise. And then you hear these vo- these singing voices, kind of like a choir. Huh. And then the children come through and talk to their mothers, and it's a t- actual two-way communication. It's phenomenal. And, and while this is going on, they have things like this: this one child is uh, associated with the sea in some way, and they have seashells show up. Uh, uh, they'll have rose petals fall out of the sky. Uh, and this is real. Yeah, I mean, we're not all, just... This is very, very it's... well documented. We're, one of the speakers at our conference this June is, is going to uh, translate, play and translate a video of... It's a documentary made of uh, Bocce's work. Oh. And uh, it, it's, it's really uh, amazing to hear this, for instance, the choir singing. And to see rose petals falling from nowhere. <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow. Yeah. Now, now, when, when is this conference then? It's June, um, it's in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's um, June 8th through 10th, and again, if they just go on, uh, we've got international speakers from all over the world, the top people in this, top researchers that know about this phenomena, and if they go on aaevp.com, hit the conference button, there's a list of all the speakers, and 
Oh, awesome. Is, is this a free event or is this a... <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> We're, I knew the answer to that. The, the AA EVP Bank uh, bringing these, some of these people in and, and just generally setting up. It's, it's a very expensive conference. And it's, yeah. it's pretty expensive for people to go. It's like 200 bucks. No. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, no. Are you, so I take it you guys are primarily the organizers of this thing, or did you? Right. Okay. And we're nonprofit. I mean, right now it looks like we're not going to break even on it. We hope that oh, we break yeah. even, but as a nonprofit, you know, our what we try to do is educate the public about the phenomena, and so we wanted to bring in these people. Uh, also, I don't know if you know who Gary, Dr. Gary Schwartz is. I've heard the name. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, Gary Schwartz is you know the testing mediums. Uh, again, out of Tucson. Um, Alice Dubois, uh, the the TV series Medium. Okay. Uh -huh. He had tested her. He she was part of his group. Uh, actually, John Edward and yeah, uh, quite a few mediums oh. he tested. Um, yeah, he he's actually doing the only legitimate research we feel like you know, scientifically based research uh, on on mediumship that's aimed at mapping the scope of mediumship. In other words, he's got hypothetical cooperating discarnate entities or something like that. And, and these guys, uh, using a double-blind test, we're doing the same thing with electronic voice phenomena in the oh. force cell EVP demonstration, but he's having, uh, he'll have one medium say, okay, my contact on the other side, please go tell this other person this message. And the other person as a medium will get mediumistically get this message. Uh, and, you know, when you don't have any kind of cues or human contact or anything, uh, he's, he's laying a very good foundation for why scientifically you can believe mediumship is for real. Hmm. Huh. That's, uh, well, we want to play, we want to play okay. another one of these. This one's entitled, This Is My Dream. Can you, can you, well, we'll go ahead and play it first. Okay. Okay. Did y'all hear that okay? We, we don't hear it here. Oh. Okay. You should have heard that, but <laughs> uh, you know which one I'm talking about, though. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play that again real quick for the listeners, direct. Okay. Um, now, can you describe that for us? Where did you get that recording exactly, or did, did you obtain that, and how did you? Right. That's one of our members who's down on the other side and has been communicating with a bunch of our members, actually. But Erlen Babcock and his son David recorded that, and it's a very clear, human-sounding voice which actually, when they listened back to the recording, it was louder than their voices, which is very atypical of EVP. Hmm. And they also didn't understand, uh, they, they couldn't figure out what it, you know, what it was, because they had been asked to go and record at the site of an automobile accident where this person had died. Um, because, you know, this is what they recorded. When they reported back to the people, they said, you know, gosh, this is the EVP re-recorded. Re and um, the lady got really excited, went into the daughter's room, pulled out a poem, and the girl, just a few days before her death, had written this poem called This Is My Dream. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> now, creepy. Now, that's when you talk about evidential information. I mean, that's a pretty big coincidence, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. A, a little more than coincidental, I think. <laughs> um, and also, one of the... Um, I guess, you know, one of the things, the skeptics, they'll say various things, but one of the things, one of the, uh, what, theories that's thrown out there right now is that we're actually implanting our thoughts on the recorder, that this is somehow PK or, and PK might be involved. Yeah, this is to avoid saying that it's survival of personality. Uh -huh. But when you record, and over and over again, we have, recordings where, you know, this is not in the person's mind. They wouldn't, you know, they, they didn't. Yeah, Erlen Babcock had no way of, of even conceiving that he would record This Is My Dream or why why he would. So, oh. anyway. Kind of, plus, plus the, the fact he was able to recognize the girl's voice. That's kind of strange. Um, for our listeners out there, if you want to call in and uh, talk to uh, Tom and Lisa, the uh, numbers are 1-800-960-2289, or the local number is 336-996-1596, and don't forget the chat room as well. Now, I want to, I want to play another one here. This one is uh, it says Morrison on it, and I'm assuming that's another one of your members. Uh, oh, yes, that was me. Yeah, the girl is... 
it, what's the full title of it? Um, it says, Morrison, Oh Yes, That Was Me. Oh. Okay, now, just let me set this up before you play okay. it. Okay. <laughs> it's a little more difficult. What you're going to hear is human voices. Yeah, the, the, uh, Morrison, it's Shell Morrison. Uh, she uh, was with her grandmother uh, inspecting the condition of a family home that was shut down, hadn't been occupied for many years. The water was turned off and everything, and it was a dry day. And they're walking into the house, and they see a puddle of water on the floor. Hmm. And you hear Grandma saying something about her shoes. It wasn't her shoes. And, and in the background, you hear a, a, a cackle, it's a <laughs> like that. Yeah. And it says, oh, yes, that was me. And th- they recognize the voice as being Grandpa, who transitioned a long time ago. And they figure that Grandpa was tickled pink about his joke he was a jokester <laughs> about this water on the floor huh. so you hear hear both the evp and the person that's physical talking well, it, it, it sounds it sounds creepy to me <laughs> <laughs> the creepy right. parts the evp yeah well, hang on we're gonna see if hopefully you guys can hear this here maybe we can try uh, to beat that volume up a little okay, bit okay we're gonna try that here we go all right i'm going for shoes not that time i Okay, did, did you guys hear that that time? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh. <laughs> oh, well. Um, let me, I'm going to play a cleaner version in just a second here. Okay. Yeah, it, just, it sounded, it sounded kind of eerie, you know? It is kind of an eerie EVP, actually. <laughs> yeah. We we like the, the there's every once in a while you get an example, and usually out in the field rather than in your home, where you have the first first of all, it's it's something that Pappy would do. It's in his voice. It, it's clearly there's some physical evidence, and he's interacting or reacting to something that people in the flesh are still doing. So, you know, there's just all kinds, plus you hear both the physical uh, people's voice and the etheric person's voice all in the same package. So th- th- something like that uh, gives us a, a, so much information to study and also evidence, and it's fun to play. No. You know, it, it, oh, I'm it, sorry. Go it's ahead. okay. It reminds me of another one that we didn't send to you, but uh, Martha Copeland, one of our members, has a going di- uh, uh, dialogue, ongoing dialogue, with her daughter Kathy, and Kathy's kind of this ringleader of the spirit team we call the big circle on the other side. And uh, anyway, you know, in her communications with Kathy, she would get these EVPs from kind of this grumpy old man, <laughs> and she kind of thought it was her grandfather who was grumpy, you know, when he was in the physical. And so she asked Kathy, you know, uh, who who's the grumpy old man? And you this EVP. EVP is so clear, and he says, "Tell her it's Satan." Oh, <laughs> and, wow. You know that that's just something that he would do. Uh, you know? wow. That's when my EVP days are over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it, can these people? Uh, can, can our listeners? Can they? Can they download any of these? Do you have? Um, do you have examples of these that can download from your site? We we have uh, a number. We we don't put a lot. We try to put a few good ones because there's so many on the internet nowadays but yeah, yeah there's some on our website uh, under the examples uh and and there's some uh, others uh, other examples of visual forms that'll kind of blow your socks off too well, have you have you guys ever had any 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 experiences like Michael Keaton had in the in the movie White Noise, where they're really malevolent, uh, evil kind of yeah, that threatening. Was, that's uh, a good question, Scott. Uh, in fact, yeah. absolutely not. Not even in our dreams. However, oh. Oh. however, anything can be, you know, kind of spooky. Um, we're kind of Tom and I do everything together. I mean, you know, we we work together, and um, he was uh, got sick and he was in the hospital, and it was quite a shock for both of us. And when he came back, we um, had dinner that evening, and I was taking the dishes in to the kitchen to wash the dishes, and I hear all, there's just the two of us, you know, uh-huh. I hear all this racket down the hallway. And I go, Tom, and I mean, I, I was behind him when we were going down the hallway. I mean, he was in front of me, and I was speaking around behind him. And we have a room that's the experiment room. 
and the our spirit team had turned okay they had turned a recording on of voices babbling in um, like I think it's Portuguese it's Portuguese babble tape. and huh. in order to do that they had to turn two they, they three had to turn switches two, on uh, a house a uh, light switch on that put power to the power strips. They had to turn the power strips on, one of them. And then they had to turn on the uh, CD player and select that CD. So there was about six things that had to be done. And and they did them all because we, we routinely shut everything down step by step. And so for, for us, I mean, it was kind of like a welcome home. But, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's like... We probably, if we'd had any sense, we should have tried to record, right? I just <laughs> shut everything down, and I said, don't you ever do this at 1 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. One of the things is, that, that movie did, well, first, Universal, we, we didn't consult in the making of the movie. We consulted, they asked us to help them sell it. Okay. What they said is they wanted to make EVP a household term before the movie came out. So they never did tell us what to say, but they gave us a lot of opportunities to tell people the real story about EVP. And so we think that they were good citizens in that regard. But we've received thousands of emails from people scared to death to talk to dead people now. <laughs> and it isn't just that movie, but you know, you mentioned Poltergeist and a few others, Exorcist, so it just goes on. So. Yeah. What we've what we're dealing with now really is uh, you know, about one more uh, white noise movie comes out and pe- people will be afraid to talk on their telephone or turn on their television sets. You know, it's it's just out of hand. And what we we find is that they didn't portray EVP correctly except for maybe the first thirty seconds when they showed an audio recorder. Uh, the rest of it was all pretty much theatrics. The statement at the end that says 1 in 12 are threatening is there are no such statistics. <laughs> but we will have to admit that the, the, the theme of it was at the end that the killer was a physical person that was doing what the demon types were telling him to do. And that we have a disclaimer we finally put on the website. Uh, <laughs> we we think that it's important that if you're apt to do something that a stranger will tell you to do, <laughs> then we would just as soon you didn't record for EVP. And don't watch TV either. <laughs> <laughs> or talk to anybody. Or any, anywhere, yeah. <laughs> Any well, You know, I know um, we did, uh, they flew us to L.A. before the release, and they, you know, they had all these press people, you know, set us in a room, and these press people came in uh, one after another for three minutes, five minutes. And then they had the foreign uh, press because, you know, this went around the world. And there was this real pretty little French girl, and she said, you know, didn't this scare you? I had to put this, my sweater up over my face, uh, you know, during this movie. And I, you know, aren't you all afraid? And it's like, you know, you should be much more afraid walking down the street at getting mugged, you know. Uh, your likelihood of that is so much greater being harmed by a human rather than somebody that's dead. Yeah, I like to say that in over 50 years of research of these phenomena from very qualified researchers around the world, uh, we have no reports of anybody being harmed by the etheric communicators. Hmm. Uh, well, no, I guess that's a good point. We've got about three minutes before the break, but I want to know, what, what have they told you it's like on the other side? Well, we've gotten information, you know, through various means, um, uh, but basically that it's a lot like here. The main thing that they seem to want to communicate is that they're okay. Um, you know, we miss them, and they want us to know that they're alive. Um, so interestingly enough, they'll talk and say that they're dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. They um, So like Oakwell, along those lines, we get... You know, again, these are all real short phrases. Uh, uh, in our fourth cell EVP demonstration, we asked, what is it like on the other side? Or, no, what happens to us when we die was the question. And, uh, again, Shell Morrison recorded, review our lives. And that's, that is pretty much a nutshell. Uh, the people that study the near-death experiences are telling us that we do indeed have a life review, and, and it's from the perspective of the people with whom we 
interfaced. So if you hurt somebody, then you sense that hurt. Um, but they also, um, evidently, we get to kind of pick our age. It sounds like most people are in yeah. their 20s or early 30s. Um, there's no disease. Um, interestingly enough, Martha Copeland asked Kathy. Uh, sa- Kathy said there were clouds. Hmm. So um, I think that this might be a level that we would call the astral or heaven. A lot of the entities that have um, done communication at some point, uh, oftentimes they'll say that they have to go on, so they progress higher, and it's not it, it's like out of reach of being able to give us this type of recording. Yeah, that's an interesting point. We, we know that there are levels up there. Okay. Well, hold that thought, guys, because we, we I want to talk about that some more. But um, we're going to have to take a short, a short break right now, and uh, we'll be back with more of uh, Tom and Lisa Butler here on World of the Unexplained. Be back in a second. There are some things in this world that go way beyond human understanding, things that cannot be explained, things that most people don't want to know about. But we're going to talk about them anyway. World of the Unexplained with Jay Scott and Trent Lackey. Heard Mondays live from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern on the OmniSound Radio 1 Network. www.omnisoundradio1.net Yeah, we're back, guys. Okay, um, oops, I forgot to turn Tom and Lisa on. You still there with me, guys? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, I guess. Oops. Basically, I guess uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about. I wanted to continue that that line of thought, though. About you know, you're talking about different levels. Um, I don't know. Have you, have you guys ever read a book? I, I, I mentioned this to everybody that we talk that I talk to on the show about um, about past life experiences and things like that. Uh, it's a, by a guy named George Ritchie, M.D. It was about an experience he had when he passed away, and he claimed to have seen the different levels of heaven and hell. It was uh, interesting. Yeah, no, um, uh, that one we maybe have not read, but there are many different people that, I mean, we've read so many different things about these different levels. Um, now, through EVP, basically, I guess, when we hear about levels, they, they talk about that they've got to move on. Okay. And uh, that it may be harder for them to reach us. Is it like an, an enlightening stage or different stages of enlightenment or something like that? Or I think that that's kind of hard. To, we aren't sure, and, you know, I'm not sure if they know either. Okay. Uh, we, we just know that, for instance, the, uh, uh, was it uh, Doc, Doc Mueller? Right. Was it? Uh, Spearcom is one of our... Uh, uh, George Meek is one of our pioneers in this field, and he had this uh, uh, communication device especially made for EVP called Spearcom. And um, the the operator of it was William O'Neill, who we feel was a very strong medium, but the, there was a primary communicator on the other side who at one point finally said that he had to go on, and the communication stopped. Hmm. And uh, just recently, uh, Annabella Cardosa, uh, uh, she runs the ITC Journal, publishes the ITC Journal out of uh, Spain. And uh, a, a friend of hers who researches her work, uh, uh, David Fontana, uh, wrote that uh, one of Annabella's primary communicators uh, uh, on the other side went on. He, he, he basically said he had to go on and went out of reach. We've seen this over and over again, even with um, uh, Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute. So we think that this is a uh, confirmation in, in a number of different ways that there are levels of consciousness, and we get the same thing through uh, the, the old uh, metaphysical concepts. So, you know, maybe we're on to something here. We look at EVP as a way of being able to cross-check these. Uh, have they ever... I'm sorry. Have, have they ever, did, when they talk about moving on, have you talked to others, uh, others in the spirit realm? Do they say that they know what's out there, or do they say have they even talked about it all, or is it like another form of death, like we have here when we move on to to their level? Is it another level entirely? Is there pain associated with this uh, disassociation from others you've known, or can you still get in touch with them? Or I don't. <laughs> 
Wow, <laughs> Scott, just uh, keep on going, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just take your time with that. <laughs> yeah, 17 I'm questions. I'm excited about this knowledge. <laughs> I wish, you know, again, one thing that's pretty frustrating about EVP is it's, you know, one to four words normally, a couple of seconds long. Um, it, it, the some of the you know there's been what exceptional communication uh-huh. and e- where actually messages back in uh, the 90s messages from one team came through on a couple of different uh, researchers computers you know we wish we could get that again but um, basically that was the the biggest description and and they kind of described their world a lot like ours and they don't tell us if it's like dying again when you um, you know when you do progress to another level hmm. but I know one of the things I guess with Tom and I we've never like continuously called on um, you know people that that do introduce them, themselves to us that, that we know have been a part of the spirit team we don't we try not to call on on a particular person all the time because we don't you know if they do need to move on I guess is what we're saying, especially with our relatives, we have not. Um, we we don't want to hold them back just so they can answer questions for us. I guess is part of that. But oh, holding them, I want to make sure that people understand holding them back. You know, there's a difference between the communication we're talking about and a ghost. And there are what we would consider ghosts, and ghosts are beings that have not moved on. You know, that stay here. Um, in the physical, even though we can't see them, they're of a lower vibration, which is, doesn't mean negative. It's just they, because of religious, being judged, um, a traumatic experience, various reasons, they they stay stuck. Now, do, do these ghosts that I mean, do these do the people, the spirits that you talk to through EVP, do they mention these ghosts that are stuck here on the earth? Um, no, 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 we we we. We thought we had ourselves a stuck one here uh, a couple of years ago, uh, where Lisa was uh, in this uh, known haunted location, and, and she sat down in this chair that was by itself. She said that this is a beautiful place, and and uh, I, I I can understand why you would like to be here. I like it here. I forget how she worded it, but she recorded the EVP. Said no, I didn't mean to stay, and so we went back to tell her to go to the light. My goodness, let's help her get, go on over. And we recorded that day uh, a man's voice saying, we are already in the light. Well, hmm. So I, we didn't know. I mean, you just don't know. You know, did he, because we, we know that groups of individuals also sometimes will remain stuck. Uh-huh. Um, you know, a husband won't go over because he's afraid he's judged. The wife will die and the kids will, I mean, they'll stay. You know, and this, the near locale is what we'd call it. But I guess what I, you know, there's that type of individual um, that you, you know, you go into a haunted house and you're always getting the same voice. And then there are individuals that are in the light or in a higher vibration that somehow manage to interface with with us here in the physical. Yeah, that. I guess that that's it. That you would you would say just uh, from lack of better terms that uh, the entity, the the person who doesn't go to the light, uh, tends to stay here for some reason. And then one of them is that you know a good one is that you know they're afraid of being judged because they were told that they sinned well in life. And we would describe them as earthbound. And when once they've gone to the light, they could still come back and talk to us energetically. Uh, and they do f- seem to find places like haunted locations as a good place to communicate because the energy is there. But they, they're definitely on. They have another life. They're some. Sometimes we feel like you almost have to call them to you because they're not hanging around. Okay. No. No. I've got another. We've got another clip here. It's called "Review Our Lives," and it's something that you guys talked to, to us about earlier um, about saying, you know, going back and looking at, at your your past life. Is it, I, I'm assuming that's what you were referring to. This yes. clip. Yes. Okay, can you describe this clip to us, guys? Uh, once again, this from the, the, the four-cell EVP demonstration. The, the questioner, there's four people. The questioner asked, what happens when we die? And that question then, what happens is, without knowing the expected answer, uh, a second person 
sends the question mentally to their communicators on the other side and then lets a third person know that a question has been sent. Okay. So the third person, not knowing what the question is, re- makes a recording and cut this recording, review our lives. Okay. All let's right. let's uh, play that real quick. Okay. That sounds creepy. Let me let me play it again for our listeners real quick. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm yeah. over here laughing. I mean, what what are what are these terminologies? Creepy sound. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> my terminology. <laughs> it um, I it is a a kind of what um, melancholy almost. Yeah, and it's yeah. Uh, slow, and you know. Uh, EVP in general is kind of fast, and a lot of times, a lot of people use a like software like the Amazing Slow Downer uh-huh. to slow it down because uh, they can be spoken, you know, rather quickly. And this one is like really slow. Yeah, it's it's almost mechanical, you know. It's like yeah, a like a robot. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's strange. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Um, well. So in, I. <laughs> I, want, I guess I want to talk a little bit about energy. Uh, you mentioned a, a second ago, Tom, how sometimes these ghosts that stay, that stick around for whatever reason, um, sort of gravitate towards certain places. And um, I, I guess what I'm getting at, then there have to be certain areas in the world where um, energy levels are higher or more accessible to you know the the other world and um i guess why <laughs> what do you think what do you think that is well first first we're just speculating because there's just a lot of research that has to be done on this okay but but from what we've been able to observe in, in both our work with evp and other disciplines that uh, the well, for instance spiritualists use a cabinet in their seances and the idea is to, uh, your, your, your physical medium is in this cabinet, and the cabinet accumulates the energy and holds it. And then it's used for the entity to communicate or to cause phenomena like moving something. Well, we, we feel that long-time human occupancy of a location, a building, uh, it, that energy builds up, the human energy builds up in that. Let's say it's the auric energy of the aura we're not sure what it is but the 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 hauntings we've recorded uh voices of our team our spirit team in haunted locations and we know that they're not stuck there uh so what we feel is going on is that yes you may have a local ghost you may have somebody staying there because they're attached to that location for one reason or another but you also have uh people coming there who i think I would say are probably there because they're going to talk to you. They're going to use that energy to communicate with you. You know, um, so there's some speculation that what's under the ground, you know, uh, we mentioned the first EVP we got was Crystal's Health. Um, we've noticed, okay, that we seemingly uh, water, around water. We, we've we gone with film crews. They like to go up to Lake Tahoe. And uh, Lake Tahoe is granite, um, so, you know, you're sitting on granite, and then you've got this water, and we seem to get some really booming EVPs around Lake Tahoe. Um, another location that uh, we seem to get a lot of EVP is uh, in Nevada is Virginia City and places close to Virginia City where there was a lot of mining going on. So, I mean, gosh, it'd be so nice if we could get to the point where the the phenomena is believed, because we're still fighting that battle, unbelievably. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, and then get funding to research why one location might be better than another. Yeah, and I find that very interesting, actually. I mean, just that whole concept in general. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> you okay, Scott? I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, for those of you listening, I wanted to talk to Tom and Lisa Butler. Uh, the numbers are 1-800-960-2289 or 336-996-1596. Those numbers again, 1-800-960-2289 or 336 996 
one five nine six, and hopefully Scott won't injure himself. No, yeah, no, I'll try happens. not to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've got I've got a, one last um, EVP recording that we have here. It's it's um, it's called it's called Where's Mom? Okay. Can you can you set that up for me, guys? This is Kathy, and we've mentioned Kathy in this uh, a couple of times during our talk. Uh-huh. Kathy is the the twenty one year old that's on the other side, died in a car accident two days before Christmas, about three years ago. And interestingly enough, Kathy had been in an accident with her cousin only three months before, and they both came out of it, and they both made a pact that if one of them were to die, they would make sure they would, you know, communicate with the remaining friend on this side. And uh, Rachel was the uh, um, friend and, and niece of Martha Copeland, the mother, and this is Kathy. Rachel was actually recorded this on her computer, was trying to reach Kathy. And this is one of her first recordings, and she says, where's mom? Hmm. Okay, Trent. Okay. Yeah, we're we going to play that real quick. Hmm. Huh. Okay, let me, let me play that real quick to the, uh, to the audience again. Huh. That's, uh, that's interesting. Well, what's yeah, neat sure about this sort of thing, too, is that you know, we have this member, when we're now good friends, but, you know, this mother, and she's saying, you know, we've gotten this recording of my daughter, here it is. And then she comes back two weeks later and says, you know, here, I got some other messages, you know, here they are. And the voice is the same. You know, you start to recognize her voice. And, um, you know, we talk about this every other Thursday recording group. Some of the other mothers will say, hey, I got this recording, it sounds like Kathy, and you know, Martha will go, yeah, that's Kathy. I mean, it's kind of fascinating. It's just, it's like they're right here with us. Uh, you mentioned spirit teams. Can, can you can you give us a, a, a better definition? And because uh, I'm I'm really not up on yeah. the uh, on the uh, You're not lexicon. Up on spirit teams. Yeah, spirit teams. <laughs> okay, what we feel is that there are entities on the other side that are researchers and are just as interested in. Earth people knowing about this type of communication and knowing that they don't die. And so it's not just us. It takes an entity on the other side or a spirit team, but let's just, you know, the basic um, communication. It takes somebody in spirit, it takes you, and it takes a recording device. Hmm. It's a three-way street, you know. I mean, you could turn on your recorder, but if nobody's going to talk, well, you're not going to get anything. Just a bunch of static. <laughs> yeah, and you've got to have the uh, device, too. So um, with us, I mean, we noticed, to be honest, right away when, I mean, we never in our lives thought that we would be running this association. But in the year 2000, Sarah Eastep, who had run it since um, 1982, contacted us and said, you know, I am having some physical problems. Um, I, you know, I need somebody to take this association over or it's toast. And uh, basically, uh, we said, okay, would try. We thought that it'd probably fall apart, but we basically said that we would try. And we noticed right away when we um, opened ourselves up to criticism and to being made fun of in front of cameras or whatever, you know, giving talks, that we developed a group of individuals on the other side that help us get these EVP, that help feed us the information for workshops and different things that work with us to get the information out, and that's the spirit team. Hmm. And there's, um, you know, there's precedence for this in a whole bunch of other areas. The, the, when we say the big circle, we know that there's a group of loved ones on the other side sometimes they've even we were pretty sure guided their like like a, a child reported in with somebody recorded the name of the person and then a little while later the mother joins the association and was able to uh, identify that voice and and say yeah that's my son he's over there and so we we feel like the big circle that that's a, a spear team on the other side of loved ones um, there's some of the most astounding phenomena that occurred years ago in this field uh, was with a group on the other side referred to as uh, Time Stream. And we know that, and we mentioned Annabella Cardosa, she's in communication with Time Stream now as a, a 
same group, maybe a Portuguese version of that. And, and a lady that's going to speak at our conference, uh, Sonia Rinaldi in Brazil, uh, she has a group that uh, has made it very clear that it's all uh, Portuguese-speaking uh, people in, the, in their group on the other side, and she does some fantastic work. And, and we've worked with groups that are not using EVP but are conducting uh, more of a seance-type phenomena. And again, they have their team on the other side, so we know this is a pattern. Oh, well. Let me, give it, let me give those numbers again. It's 800-960-2289, 800-960-2289. Don't be shy, guys. And if you are, jump in the chat room, omnisoundradio1.net or worldoftheunexplained.com, and uh, you can get in here with the – we've got a, quite a little group forming right now. Um, so uh, local, num- local line, excuse me, is 336-996-1596. Go ahead, Trent. Um, basically, I guess uh, the next area I want to talk about – is um, what is what does the scientific community um, feel about your research? I mean, uh, are they pretty skeptical in general? Uh, do you have some open people, or, or you know, what a, you know, have they, or do they ignore you? I don't know. <clears throat> well, uh, the, the, probably one way I could answer that is just uh, I think that you, they think that if they ignore us, we'll go away. Um, <laughs> some of the scientists are beginning to study us um you know it, it just we we there's an article in the uh, british uh, society for psychical research journal that i think was pretty good it talked about the risk a uh, an australian parapsychology uh, or a parapsychologist took in studying any kind of phenomena telekinesis uh, whatever you want to study his professional career was basically put at stake when he studied it. Uh, some of the excellent work that Gary Schwartz is doing, uh, again, you know, other scientists are kind of shunning him. Uh, we, we feel like we first have to get past the obstacle of the, the existence of a non-physical aspect of reality. I mean, let's face it, most of our science is based on the Big Bang, and a biological origin of consciousness. And until we get past that to the possibility that there's a, uh, what, that you have a spiritual side as well as a physical side, until we get past that, we're not going to get a lot of scientific support. We're giving them so many facts and, you know, so much evidence right now. Uh, we don't know how we're going to actually make the change, but we do know that we're getting to the point where scientists are beginning to take a look. And, you know, it, one of the things, this terrible movie called White Noise. Before White Noise, nobody could get any funding whatsoever to study EVP. You know, I mean, it was a wall. And there are, I think, seven grants that have been let in the last year to study EVP. Unfortunately, uh, they're (laughs) all uh, in the uh, UK and in Europe. But um, there are grants being given now. You know, money actually been being given to researchers to, to study EVP. So. Uh, all because of the movie. Well, well we, we feel like that the, the, the popular opinion now is making it more okay to talk about EVP. What, what did, when, you, when you guys first started doing this, what did your friends think about it when you first said, hey, by the way, you know, I, check this out. You know, I mean, what was their first response to people that knew well, you really well? First of all, you're assuming that we have friends. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, to be honest with you, you know, we were talking about being in Kansas. Uh-huh. We didn't tell anybody. Okay. Um, you know, I know, I mean, I learned really quickly. Um, when I would talk about it, uh, somebody would say, you mean like hearing voices in the trees? Or, uh, <laughs> you know, people just, you know, you're delusional. Um, the, the only thing you can do with EVP is, when you get that response, if it's a close enough friend that you're not going to freak out, you can play these recordings, and that's a little more difficult, you know, for them to deal with. However, a true skeptic will still not hear or will there will rationalize somehow in their mind how this is not possible. So, yeah, you may as well look at a skeptic as 
you know, as, as the, the skeptics we've been bumping into, as being really religiously skeptical, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and you know they just can't afford to uh, let us be right, <laughs> so we don't try. But, um, you know, if you have a friend that's open-minded, yeah. now now it's just a lot different. I mean, the movie did bring a big awareness about EDP, I think, to the general public. Yeah, we try to talk about it in terms of, uh, you know, science, evidence. Uh, we're very pragmatic, Lisa and I, and, and um, it, it's just, uh, unfortunately, we share terms with religious people. So as soon as we talk about the survival of uh, personality after so-called death, uh, I mean, what people hear are religious terms. And yeah. we don't mean that at all. It's just kind of a fact. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I just uh, got a, uh, I just got a, um, a question here in the uh, chat room. Um, we're, we're in Kansas for you, and, uh, you know, what part of town? Uh, we were in... Uh Kansas City. And at what part of town in Kansas City? L- Lenexa. Oh, okay. uh, Overland Park was where uh, I was in Lenexa. Lisa was in Overland Park. As far as where we worked, we lived in Lenexa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we, wow. we don't want to drag our corporation into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so what, what did you guys do before this? Or is, both, uh, is this a full-time uh, job management. now? Management. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and again, you know, like I'm, I'm a uh, in- engineer. Uh-huh. Uh, and so I was doing uh, technical. I mean, I mean, it's really hardcore technical work. And, and Lisa was dealing with uh, a lot of corporate uh, executives and everything. And we generally kind of kept our head down. Mm, I can understand that. <laughs> we we did the paranormal stuff at night. You know? <laughs> right. It's like the plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Has Has anyone ever Has anyone ever accused you, the skeptics um, in general? Of uh, doctoring these recordings to make uh, you know to get to get us out. Oh, actually, I don't think I don't think anybody has really done yeah, that. Yeah, no, we've we've had well, we've had a lot of emails. You know, the, the, we try Not to be a lot. A, a, accessible so that people can communicate with us and learn. But at the same time, we've had a lot of people say, you know, that, that's all fraud, or you're you're just defrauding okay. the public, or you know, they think. There's no reason for us to defraud because there's no money in this. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't take a, a salary. We even the income from the book all goes to the association, and you know it's it's talks cheap. Well, when people tell us that, well, you know, this is just radio waves, and they're satisfied, they're happy, they've explained it, but that's been disproven years ago. Hmm. Okay, and I guess a follow up to that is, um, have you guys ever received any any EVPs that you've kind of been wary of. I mean, um, yeah, when I, I uh, first started recording, Tom was writing a book. And so he was writing this book, and it's like I had, I needed something to do in my spare time, so I took up recording. I think he joined me probably six months later, but in the beginning, I was doing this on my own. And I would, every night at seven o'clock after we ate dinner, I would go up and I would record. And I got this, what I would call a dirty old man. <laughs> really, you know. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, the lowest low life you'd find drunk in a bar. <laughs> and that's and, the guy that wants to talk. Sometimes that's yeah, been us. Yeah. I mean, here I was new to this. You know, this was, I was really, you know, I mean, I guess within a week you know, or two weeks, I got this foul mouth, you know, I mean, the F word. Um, what was terrible is he'd tell me what I was wearing. Ooh, oh, that's, okay. that I is mean, creepy. That is right there. You know, he, you, you can't see him. He's right there, huh. and he's, you know, saying terrible <laughs> things. I mean, he's not saying he's going to kill me, but... What would anyway, you think of that, Tom? So, <laughs> yeah. And so um, it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, and I think a lot of experimenters go through this kind of stage. And it's kind of like, what What I say, you know, trial by fire. I felt like, okay, this is too dadgum important. Um, you know, this is spooky. This is scary. He, but he hasn't, you know, I thought, oh, are things going to start flying around the house? Um, you know, and here he is, and he's here, and he tells me what I'm wearing. I know he's right here. 
So I rec- I mean, he had given me his name. I recognized his voice. What I started doing was when I would thought I would was going to hear him, I would mm-hmm. just you know whip by a couple of seconds. And I at that time I had my grandmother was the you know kind of like this grandmother spirit team, and I had three women that were talking to me, and they'd even say, "Okay, here he is. We can't keep him out." <laughs> you know, they'd tell me, and so I just kept basically i mean i tried everything i tried prayer prayer salt you name it you know uh, protection all these things about protection but what actually worked for me was ignoring him and a few evp that i did listen to he complained you know that i was ignoring him and then he went away okay we really have not had no, nothing since then. But it, it's really interesting. If you look at the dynamics of what she just described, she had a little bit of intimidate or a little bit of, uh, what, interpretation? Yeah. She was a little intimidated by beginning to record right, in the right. first place. So, so in a way, she kind of realized her fears, and she found that the way to make it go away was simply to withhold the energy from it, hmm. ignore it, and it went away. And... Since then, it's, uh, we feel, feel like it's all in the attitude. We, uh, uh, Lisa recorded this uh, uh, EVP. It's on the website. She said something effective, uh, why don't you like people here? And, and you hear this guy that sounds like he's a, a Kentucky gentleman. He says, prepare to die. Like, oh, wow. No, and, no, it's funny. I mean, you've got to <laughs> laugh. I mean, <laughs> yeah, when spirits tell me prepare to die, I go hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you silly. It's the whole attitude is that... Uh, you know, it's like if you look at the way spiritualists deal with with the entities, is they won't put up with nonsense like that. Yeah. Just, and so we, that's kind of what, yeah, we try to do. <laughs> well, guys, we're going to have to take a short break, and we'll be right back for the last um, part of the show. Um, so, wait a minute. Okay. I've got a caller in a chat room that says he's tried to call six times, and he keeps getting an answering machine. That's not good. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> what are you hearing on the answering machine? <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, so uh, sorry about that. We're going to be right back, guys, in just a second. Okay, all right, now we're we're back. I've got levels again. Thank God. All right, we're up and running. Okay, guys. guys uh, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry for our listeners. Uh, we have no idea what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> as as you know, we're not that professional, according yeah. to our little radios. <laughs> okay, guys. So well, what, any professional, you're just not that technical. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Maybe maybe that might be it. So what what were we talking about? Now I've lost I've lost my train of thought completely. <laughs> uh, I don't remember either. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Um, hmm. <laughs> but it seems to be working now, though. Okay. The, the number should be working again, two guys, and that number is eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine. Sorry, we've heard that um, p- apparently a couple of you guys have been in the chat room, been trying to call in, and you couldn't get through. So that applies to everyone else listening that's not in the chat room. Eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine, or locally at three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six. Call in if you've got any questions about EVP, or if you've got some, uh, you know, you want to play, which we probably won't be able to hear anyway but um, you know anything you have any questions about maybe recording you're on or questions about maybe some of the stuff you have recorded that you just can't make out which brings me to my next question which is how long does it take you a lot of time sometimes where you may have to sit down and say what is this I mean you can you can hear the voice there but you know as a lot of these if, if you didn't have it written down you know in your email that you sent me with these samples some of them I would have to listen to you know, 40, number, 50 times yeah, before I figure times. out exactly what it was that was being said. And how do you know if you're misconstruing it? How do you know if you're hitting it on the head? I mean, you and know. That's uh, legit. You know, like Tom was talking about, there are fundamental voice frequencies missing in these EVPs. So there's a reason why they're difficult to understand. And on our website, there's, I think, one of the clearest EVP um, is uh, recorded by Sarah Estep, and it's um, I Was Seeing the War. Uh, Universal Pictures in the uh, uh, publicity and in, in all the ads that were on the television, they needed it to say, I will see you no more, uh. and said that it said, I will see you no more, saying that the uh, what you're going to hear is real. Nothing has been <laughs> changed, right? Except through Hollywood they, license. <laughs> what yes. they didn't know is that Sarah recorded that during a sightings TV show. 
Oh, and so all of these people were writing us and saying, how can they say it says I'll see you no more when it says I, I was seeing the war? But that EVP, which is very clear to me that says I was seeing the war, people write in and say, it says I was seeing the water. Um, it's and it just, yeah, just we, we probably had about a dozen different uh, versions of that. So it, you, you're trained, you know, culturally trained to recognize words out of sound. Uh-huh. And you, you, you depend on certain cues in, in the spoken word to be able to recognize it as a word. And they, a lot of them, the, those cues are just simply missing an EVP. So there, there's a lot of really subtle reasons why EVP can be real difficult to agree on what it says. Huh. And I, what we would say, I mean, a couple of things. It can be very time-consuming. Oh, we've uh, okay. we got, we we got a caller here. The phones must be working. Caller, where are you calling from? What's your name? This is John from Athena, New York. Hey, John. John, we missed hey, you. how are you? <laughs> yeah. I um, guess the spirit world is playing with uh, your radio show tonight. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, okay, I got a question. What's on your mind, John? I'm, I'm curious. Have they ever um, gotten... Um, or heard of um, ghostly messages be- being uh, gone through a telephone line, uh, someone picking up the phone and hearing the, the loved one on the other side or on an answering machine ever? Yes, most yes. definitely. There's a book. It's out of print, but it's an excellent book, and you can still find it, you know, through, I don't know, some of those, you know, the uh, online, some of the resale booksellers. It's called Phone Calls from the Dead. And two parapsychologists, uh, somebody, you know, said that they had gotten a phone call from their mother after she died, and they started looking into it, and they started documenting all these different uh, phone calls. And we get people, I don't know, like one out of, I don't know, 500. You know, it's not as nearly as common, of course, as EVP, but a lot of people have had that experience. experience. Um, we've had several members, one of them that I can think of, Vicki Talbot, her son and a friend died in a kayaking accident in uh, Washington, and they found the kids' helmets, they found the kayaks, and they never recovered the bodies. And she started getting these weird messages on her answering machine, and she'd erase them. (laughs) And finally, I don't know what, I forget now what it was that she saw or read, and she said, maybe I better look at this, you know, a little better. And the boys were actually leaving messages on the answering machine. And were then, they course, actually talking? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're... they're uh, I forget. Do you remember what some of the messages were, Tom? No, no. But it, it's, it's actually... The telephone is electronically a, a very good uh, environment for EVP because it, it has a lot of noise. It's just right on the verge of instability all the time. But... The, the thing is, you know, you, you have to be really careful uh, that the message, the information in, in, the, in the message has to make some sense, I think. Otherwise, it's too easy to mistake it for somebody that got a wrong number and grumbled as they hung up the phone. You know, talking about telephone lines, um, sorry, we keep mentioning our conference, but Sonia Rinaldi from Brazil is one of the people that's speaking at our conference. And she, interestingly enough, She takes phone calls from parents who have lost their children. She makes uh, appointments. She will be on the telephone with them. They don't actually come to her lab. She does it over the phone. She leaves an extension phone off the hook for the children to communicate. And then she records all this, and the, the parents ask 10 questions. And then she listens back to it. And using the phone line, she gets these amazing recordings from children communicating with their parents. Oh. Wow, reminds me of that episode of The Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, Scott and Trent? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I was thinking of that. Um. Yeah, uh, one more question. Uh, I'm going into Hollywood here. Wh- what did they think of the movie White Noise? Was that a bunch of uh, crap? You joined us late, John. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Oops, oops. <laughs> That's fine, man. Okay, well, I guess I got my one question in today. Thanks, Scott and Trent. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, John. We'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Take care. All That's right. good there. Phones are up again. You know, in, in regard to that telephone call that uh, Lisa was talking about with Sonia Rinaldi, uh, one of the best researched 
voices in, in electronic voice phenomena, uh, she recorded, she normally uses what she calls a Portuguese babble background noise. Uh -huh. And she was closing down the telephone call, and she says, okay, I'm going to close now, and she turns off the babble sound, and this, this girl on the other side that's deceased she was talking, and she continues to talk after the babble sound stops. And so you have a very clear copy of her voice. And they've analyzed that, comparing it to her voice when she was alive. And they, as you can't say 100%, but it's like 98 or 99% probability it's the same person. Um. I think it was 95 Okay. Good, good enough. <laughs> yeah, well, um, unfortunately, final words, yeah. Yeah, it's come to final word time. We only got a um, couple of minutes left. I want to plug your, your website, www.aaevp.com, and your book. I want to plug that, too. Check out the website. Pick up a copy of the book. The Dead are, uh, There Is No Death. and oh my There gosh. Are No Dead. Yes. There, yeah, and There Are No Dead. And that's written as a textbook. We, we wrote it because we had to have something that we could point to for our members and say, okay, if you read this book, this will tell you what you need to know to go on with this. And, um, you know, it, it, it's really what it, both as a, a valuable tool, we think, for a person to learn about EVP and also, of course, when you buy it, the proceeds go into the uh, association to keep it going. Right. And oh, any, any last yeah. words then, guys? We enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah we, we did too. The, the, the conference we're holding, and again, there's a big button on the front page of our website. Right. Um, that conference is in Atlanta, and it's probably the best opportunity for anybody to hear from some of the very important you know, tomorrow's pioneers in this field of study. And uh, you know, we're bringing them in from Scotland. Uh, uh, if anybody's heard of the skull experiments, the skull mediums will be speaking there. Um, and it, we'll be doing the, we'll be doing a workshop and actually doing a recording, yeah. hmm. and going over the recording. And then there's another gal, Martha Copeland, who we've talked about. She'll be doing a workshop on how to record and doing a live recording. So, oh, wow. we're, so it's not just talking. It's uh, gonna be, <laughs> super cool. It's gonna be yeah. some hands on. That sounds great. Yep. Well, guys, we we uh, we enjoyed it, and we'd yep. like to have you back on again sometime. Thanks again, great. and uh, good luck at the uh, good conference. luck in Atlanta. Okay, okay well, thanks. thank you have, for having us. Uh, oh, thank absolutely. You for, thank you for being on the show. We appreciate it. Bye. 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 And there you have it. Man, EVPs. Mm, creepy. Really? <laughs> I've been using I mean, that word it, all night. Yeah, it is yeah, creepy. Yeah, I mean, it, it has I'm to sorry, be. Any, anybody that, that says that they would like to talk to the spirit world, man, and, and you know, like on the phone, yeah, <laughs> you know, or, I mean, or, you know, tune into radio. It's, I mean, just whatever. <laughs> it's just, <clears throat> I don't even know what to say about it. Would you it. like grandma to call you? I sure wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, mean, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, in a way, I would, but then again, you know, it's like, wait a minute, you know, this just seems... How do you, how do you know, though? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, oh, yeah, their voices is... I mean, if it's demonically influenced, though, that demonic can, you know, the demonic yeah. can take on many different, you know, I, things. I have to agree with you, Scott. I mean, it, it seems like they're... I don't, know. I don't mess with the EVP stuff no, because no. there's certain things that I believe. Or, or, you know, it's like Ouija boards. You know, you mess with certain things and you open yourself you know, up to. Yeah, to we had a little things. experience with a Ouija board one time. Yeah, a long, long time ago. In an abandoned house. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with a. We don't recommend this. Jonathan by the Essick way. and. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I used his name. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Let's get us sued. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> so we've got seven minutes. It's time for the crack house. You guys know the rules, and yeah, if, if we don't get, we didn't get calls last week. That really made me <clears> mad. So if you guys want to call in, it's great. It's eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine. That's eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine, or locally three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six. Call into the crack house. What's in the crack house today, Scott? Um, an Adam Go Rightly book, uh -huh. a keychain, and a, and a CD of their choice of an archive. Of their choice of an archive. It's not the Beast of Adam Go Rightly though. This is a new one. Uh, this is. Um, Oh crap! The prankster and the, the conspiracy. prankster and the conspiracy. That's a good book, actually. I, I've been reading it, and it's yeah. Uh, oh it's yeah, it's cool. It's pretty you know, neat, yeah. I really, I, I dig his uh, his uh, his take on things. I do too. But so, anyway, anyway, we're waiting for a call from the crack house. So I guess I'll go ahead and key up the music. These questions are real, real easy tonight. Okay, yeah, they're, I mean, they're like, like the, stupid easy. The gems that I yeah, dug up I mean, the other day. I'm if, really if you sorry don't know about these, that. you know, I, I I'll just make fun of you on the air. No, I'm kidding. I would never do that. But, <laughs> I mean, these are so easy that, that that anyone should know these. So 
give them the number. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give them the numbers again. Trent. Okay, the numbers are one eight hundred nine six zero two two eight nine, or the local number is three three six nine nine six one five nine six. All right, I'm gonna play the music now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and those of other persuasions, lock your doors and hide your valuables because it's time now for another exciting round of the game show everybody's talking about in abandoned alleys everywhere. It's the one to crack house $2 pyramid. So give it up for the tycoons of trivia, Jay Scott and Trent Lackey, who every week give away their stuff to some lucky listener. And we're back. Woo! All right. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, it's a fun little. Song. Yeah. No one's called in. Again. We're gonna dro- we're gonna drop the crap. We're giving away free stuff here. And nobody's calling. Nobody's calling. I got DVDs and all kinds of crap. I got I got all kinds of stuff. It's gonna I mean, be in the crack really? house later. But you know, I'm not gonna put it in there if if no one's gonna call. That's true. Somebody out there in I mean, we'll keep cyberspace. It. Well, I mean, we'll should, keep uh, it. should call. You know, so, it's a, it's a fun little show. And it, uh, it's a fun little uh, question. It's, it's, it's a hobby for us. Really. You know, and um, um, we love to Trent hear Trent don't like you. it, though. Trent don't like the crack house. Oh, well, don't <laughs> really say that on the air, Scott. And you can vote in whether or not you but like I, it by you clicking know, on the, the, the WOTU $2 crack house. And that'll give us a, a pretty good idea. Thing on the screen, yeah. Go to the bottom, scroll all the way yeah. down the bottom. You can vote if you like it, you hate it, or you don't know. Because there's always somebody that don't know. <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> uh, but in, anyway, it's like I said last, last week, um, your <laughs> input helps us make a better show you know yeah. i mean we do this for for you guys the listeners and um and to stroke our own egos <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> you can't really see my face but just sort of like a a look of astonishment i guess um yeah okay we're gonna give it another minute and if we don't have anybody i'm just gonna ask trent the questions and then y'all, do i get the free stuff <laughs> you, yeah you, you get the free stuff <laughs> so you trent gets the free stuff you know i mean this is pathetic. Uh, no callers, you know. Don't be saying stuff like that. I mean, people, oh, no, it is, people man. are shy. Is. I, I don't think. I think what it is is they don't like it. I, I don't know. And if that's the case, I want to know. I mean, we'll stop yeah, doing we it. We'll want keep, to know. We'll keep the guest on longer. You know. That's true. Because I, I mean, mean, we could have easily talked to um, to Tom and Lisa for another, you know, ten minutes. I mean, if not longer, but you know. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying. Slot. You know what I'm saying? It's for the slot. So we're gonna give it. Um, I don't know. We'll give it another thirty seconds here. If somebody calls in, we'll we'll take it. If not, uh, once the clock starts. The game is afoot, and the game is over <laughs> for anyone that wants to call in. So uh, another 15 seconds here, and we're on the two-minute delay, so um, you That's won't know That's kind of that confusing is, me yeah. al- already. <laughs> we get to whoop it up. Kick it up a notch. we get to kick it Bam, sideways. Like, like Emerald says. That's right. Uh, we can't say that. <laughs> okay, well, I guess no one's calling. I have a really Trent, good joke so, uh, about the Emerald TV show that was very short-lived. Yeah. But I, it really has nothing to do with anything. Oh, well, no one's calling. Start the okay, crack house. There I'm we asking go. You. These, I tell you, these are really simple, guys, so you're missing out on some free stuff uh, that you could easily well, get. Go yeah. ahead. Here we go. All right. Spice found in many Italian foods is said to ward off the undead. Garlic. All right. Uh, what type of metal should be used to hunt the werewolf? Silver. Uh, what's the proper pronunciation of the word Wicca? Uh, Wicca? Yeah. This line comes from what famous Shakespeare play? Double, double, toil and trouble. Oh, that would be uh, Macbeth. Who wrote the book Dracula? Bram Stoker. See, look at that. You got them all right. Oh, and my there gosh. Goes a uh, oh, man. Two minute delay. Two minute delay. Uh, yep. Let's take the call. No, I think they hung up. Yep, they hung up. <laughs> All right. Oh well, my gosh! Now there you go. We, we feel like schmucks now. Yeah, we do. But you know, hey, Caller, and, and we're really you sorry could about have that. Won. You could have um, won. Yeah, I, sorry about that caller. Um, I guess we should wait just a little bit longer. Just, just a touch, just a uh, tad longer. Well, well anyway, guys. Uh, uh, well, we know that somebody was calling and somebody wanted to win the stuff. Yeah, somebody wanted to win the stuff, and and um, I guess and, uh, we're going to wrap it up now. Yeah. You know, so okay. here we go. Let's play the uh, old wrap up. Oh, there's uh, a, there's another line. You, you want? To- Dude. Nah, caller. Sorry about that. Like I said, uh, well, sh- we're, we're running out of time, guys. Hang on. Hey, caller. And okay, they hung up. All right. Well. 
<laughs> okay, that was a little awkward, confusing, like, uh, you know, your first, your first school dance in sixth grade where you're wearing like a peach I was say, <laughs> matching peach uh, P- jacket. Peter Griffin pants. talking about his first sexual uh, his loss of his virginity and it shows like him playing on the football field last night and he's running <laughs> and there's like three guys jump on top of him and the one guy like jumps right on top oh, of him and he's like Scott's got and he's like, I, uh, oh <laughs> he's you know disappointing he said and he's like uh, so can I buy you breakfast <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, um, I'm, I'm Jay Scott. I'm Trent uh, Laggy. We're uh, DJ. And all that good stuff. I'm, I'm talking. Oh, who's, who's on next week? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nigel <laughs> Suckling. Talking. All right. Check let's, the website out. Let's finish this quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> this plane is crashing pretty hard. Yeah, it is. All right. We're out of K Vegas, a uh, small town where we talk about big things. We're out of here, guys. Take Bye. care.